Welcome to the Achieve Your Apex podcast. Chad Himes here, author of Achieve Your Apex. I hope you have checked out the book by now. If you haven't, you can get it at achieveyourapex.com or you can just go to Amazon. They'll ship it even faster. You decide how you want to get it and I'll get it to you. Yes, it's also available on Audible if you want me to just read it to you with the help of some amazing friends. I want to tell you a story in this episode. We talked in the last episode about the big why. To me, that's it's got to be big enough, move you emotionally, right? It's not a big enough why if it doesn't make you cry is how I was talking about that. And in the next episode, I'm going to go into more on the big why. I want to share one of my opportunities when it came to the big why. And I got to take you back almost 20 years ago now. I can't believe that it's almost 20 years. And more on that, if you stay tuned to the end of this episode, I will make an announcement. 20-ish years ago, almost, 20, I ran a marathon. Now, it wasn't that easy. Marathons, first of all, are just not that easy to run. Even though it might seem that a lot of people in your world keep posting about running. If I take you back to that time, I was a much larger version of me. I was a good, oh, 70 pounds bigger than what you're seeing on the screen now if you were watching this on my YouTube channel, Chad Himes. I was dared and challenged by some friends. We were in Cabo for a vacation that we had earned from the business I was working with. And we were sitting around at one of those all-inclusive resorts. And one of the guests that was with us had just talked about the Las Vegas marathon he had completed. Congratulations, Brian. I had had one or two too many of those all-inclusive beverages and shot my mouth off saying I could run a marathon. At which time it was faster than the speed of light that everybody at the table bet me I couldn't do it. I said to each one of them, you're on, you're on, and you're on. And I'd bet any of you today, if anybody still wants to bet me, I can't do it. I'm a different person today. Don't make that wager with me. Now, I took the bet from five people at that table that didn't believe I could actually run a marathon. $100 a pop. I got home from Cabo and the first voicemail I found on my phone when I came back was from another business person that worked with us who said, I hear you're taking wagers and wanted in. That's right. I was into $600 for running a marathon I had 11 months to get ready for. Well, I did what any person would do as the year started. It was January. I did what anybody who had made a wager about running a marathon would do. I went and bought really nice running gear. Well, of course, I had to look the part, right? So I did that in the month of January never used it. Yet I went out and I got it. February showed up and I realized I was a single dad. I was home with my daughter most of the time when I wasn't working and I didn't have a lot of time to run or go to a gym. And I couldn't just go outside and leave my, at that time, five-year-old daughter alone in the house and go train. So I bought a treadmill. I brought a treadmill into my house and for the month of February, my treadmill looked like most of your treadmills. And that is a clothes hanger, right? There were towels and clothes and all the things hanging all over it. Well, there we were in March. And it was, my daughter was sitting around. I had her put down in front of SpongeBob or whatever we were watching at the time. And I went and I put on my gym clothes and I went and I got on my treadmill and I put on my headphones while she was watching her show in the other room. And I covered the screen on my treadmill with a towel and I started running folks. I turned that treadmill on and I was having a great time running. I even got cocky enough to say, well, I can go faster than that. And I turned it up and I ran and I turned it up and I ran and I realized I can't run that fast. So I turned it back down and I ran and I ran and I ran. Now, if you know me and you've ever worked out with me, you know, I sweat a lot. My body is very good at sweating to release temperature. And uh, I sweat a lot while I was running. I was huffing, puffing, dripping, and I couldn't go any farther. And I hit the quick stop button on the treadmill and it came to a stop. And I went proudly to grab that towel, figuring I had run quite a ways to wipe away all my sweat and realized I had not made a mile. I hadn't even made a mile before I threw in the towel, literally. 
and I laid down on my treadmill and started to cry. I realized what I had gotten myself into and there was no way to get out of it. You see, I didn't have the motivation to push forward on this. I didn't have a big why because a few people betting me some money wasn't going to really motivate me. I was going to lose the money. Fine. I was going to lose some pride. Fine. Didn't matter to me. I can take the humble, the, the beating when I don't achieve something. I'm okay with that. It helps me learn. I had nothing to motivate me. But as I laid there on the treadmill and I cried, my daughter walked over to me, five years of age, towering above me as I was laying down, put her hand down on my shoulder and said, it's okay, daddy. You can do anything you want to. Now I heard you. You just went, oh, because it melted your heart too. To imagine your five-year-old, if you have a child when they were five, when they're becoming five, a future opportunity where your child looks at you and says, you can do anything. And at that moment, I realized I either had to tell my daughter I had been lying to her that you could do anything you put your mind to, or I had to get off my ass and do something. And I finally had a big enough why that it would make me cry. If I lied to my daughter and let her down, tears would have made me cry, would have broken my heart. The next day I was running, the day after I was running, I was eating better. I was finding time on the treadmill whenever and wherever I could make it. And when my daughter was with her mother on the weekends, I was in a running club that Brian got me to. I got there, I ran with a group that told me, they said, here's your homework, go run this much over the week, meet back here, we're gonna run this much next weekend all together. Okay, there was a group of 20, 30 of us, there were lots of people. And when I got to that running group for the first time, before they even gave me my homework, they said, how fast are you gonna run this marathon? And I said, I don't know, how fast can I run this marathon? And I joined what was the four and a half hour, 420 I think was the time, nine and a half minute mile. That was what I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go for that one. If it's too fast, I'll move. If it's too slow, I'll move. I'll see what I can do. And I trained and I trained and I trained and I trained. Now, two weeks before the marathon actually happened, five of those six people paid me off. They said, congratulations, you got this. The sixth person, Scott, Scott Gillespie, if you're out there listening, it was you. Scott said to me, let me have a chance to win my money back. Let's go double or nothing. I said, what is it, Scott? And he said, how fast? I said, I'm going to run my first marathon in four and a half hours. He said, no way. You won't do it. Go get it. Race day showed up. Now the gun went off on race morning and I started running. Now, folks, if you've ever run in one of these races, you realize that when the gun goes off and the clock starts, it's still like 10 to 15 minutes for you to get to the start line, probably. So the clock means nothing. I got to the start line, started my magic watch and off I went running. I was going, I was running too fast. People were telling me slow down in the group I was with. Okay, I slowed down a little bit. They told me speed up, I was going too slow. I finally lost them as I was running. They started fading and falling off. Mile eight to nine was an uphill. I loved hills. I took off, I ran past everybody on the way up the hill. Mile nine to mile 10 was flat and everybody who I had passed just passed me because I was exhausted from running the hill for so long. I got to mile 13, saw a little sign that told me my time halfway through the marathon, and I realized the winner was done. I kept running. I got to mile 20. People were cheering, you're almost there, mile 20. I said to him, no, I'm not. I still have six miles. That's over an hour. Shut up. I got to mile 22, and I started bartering with myself, right? Run to that streetlight, and then you can walk. And I'd get to the streetlight, and I'd walk to the stop sign, and then I'd run to the next streetlight. And then I'd start cheating myself and saying, no, 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 you meant the next street light you can walk to. And I would walk a little farther and I got running and walking and running. I came around the corner. There was the finish line, 26.2 miles. It was right in front of me and I was running for it. And I was looking left and looking right, trying to find my daughter because I knew she was going to be there. Her mother said she would bring her to the finish line for me. And I was going to pick her up and carry her over the finish line with me. And I couldn't find her. And then there she was on the other side of the finish line, holding a sign that said, daddy, you're the best. And your was spelt wrong. And it didn't matter. I put my head down and I powered through and I ran. I grabbed my daughter. I threw her in the air. I twirled her around. I had done this for her. I forgot to stop my watch. No idea how long it took me to run that marathon. And as soon as I crossed that finish line, the goal was over. My big why was done. I had proved to my daughter, you can do anything you put your mind to. 
Now, I'll just fast forward to the next day when I walked into my office, found an envelope laying on the desk with two crisp $100 bills in it. Thank you, Scott. And a little piece of paper that said, Chad Himes, finishing time, four hours, 29 minutes, 39 seconds. That's right, because I had a goal and I went out there to beat it. Now, folks, I'm almost 20 years old. And I'm telling you right here, right now, the next February that's coming up, which will be February of 2025. I don't know when you're listening to this. I'm running a marathon. And I'm going to prove to everybody out there that age is not an issue. And I'm going to crush my old marathon time. That's right. I'm going to knock off at least 30 minutes from my original marathon time, maybe more depending on how my training goes and prove to you that you're never too old to achieve what it is you're after. Hashtag age defying. Folks, you need to set goals and you need to understand that as soon as you cross that finish line, whether it's a real finish line like mine or a virtual finish line, then the motivation is gone. You find the next motivation for the next thing that's going to challenge you. And that's understanding. If it doesn't make you cry, it's not a big enough why. Until our next episode, keep climbing.